Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. Here, this is the spot. Where the conversation is pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Welcome home, Brains. There's only one requirement to hang out on the edge, is that you open your big brain and close your small mind. Did you bring your thinking caps? It's time to put them on, because the conversation starts now. How are you? I'm fine. Yeah, welcome, welcome to On the Edge. Yay! <laughs> I'm excited to have you. I am very excited to be here. Is this your first podcast? This is my first podcast. Ooh, girl, I get to be your first. <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it. Well, welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney. Brains, mm-hmm. we have... Katerina Newhausen. Here on the edge, she is another super brain. I bring you only super brains. This woman was in the military and she did medical research. We're going to talk about that. Then she left that, went into the corporate private sector, and now she's back to really help people with wellness and uh, trying to get their self together. She's got a great product that she's working with. She's going to give us a little information on that. She's a mother. You know, she likes to play games. And (laughs) she is a real estate. Are you a real estate agent or broker? Neither. Investor. Oh, Uh, she got the coin brains. So let's (laughs) welcome her here to the edge. Katerina Newhauser. How are you, baby? I'm doing great. Thank you. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome to the house. We are so glad to have you. Tell my brains a little bit about you and all the phenomenal work that you did with them in and out of the military and the research that you've done. Well, uh, I was a a medical researcher for the military. I have an MD and a DRPH. So I actually focused most of my military time in the research area where we were studying infectious disease rates among, you know, along the, all of the Air Force. Um, we would track them. We would figure out where hot spots for infectious diseases were occurring. Um, then we would send teams out to identify why, you know, what was going on in that particular area that needed uh, potentially to be addressed and then to come up with solutions. We uh, were a hub for the um, CDC with regards to the influenza vaccine. So we had certain sites that we were monitoring serotypes and reporting to them. Um, I did some personal studies. I looked mostly at infectious diseases, uh, respiratory diseases uh, like adenovirus amongst recruits and was trying to figure out ways where we could reduce the infectious disease rates amongst them so that they could become airmen and and help serve the military. Uh, As a public health officer, I also had an office uh, where uh, we monitored the health and wellness of a particular base, whatever base that I was assigned to at the time. Um, We'd make sure our food facilities and um, were not breaking any rules, people weren't getting sick. Um, uh, And then we would report to the um, commander if there were any issues and what we thought we would need to. It was actually very fun. Well, I'm glad you found it fun because I find it very tedious. (laughs) You know, once upon a time, I wanted to be a scientist, but I'm such an extrovert. I didn't have the, the discipline Or should I say, I can have anything I want. I did not create the discipline to, you know, be able to go into such detail on a micro level. Now, you know, the military, my husband and my son both serve. A lot of times there, I shouldn't use, I shouldn't use the word guinea pigs, but they are used uh, to try different vaccines because they are in these hot spots. For example, COVID. You know, now I know that you're probably not working in that field right now, but I know that your brain was, you know, going a thousand miles a minute trying to figure out 
what's going on because it is also too a respiratory virus where it mm-hmm. came from what we can do what has this this experience in COVID taught you well the biggest uh, lesson is that coordination is so important risk communication key um and it didn't happen really with covid um there were secrets that were being kept information that just wasn't being shared with the public um from the get-go and in something like covid which is a novel virus um that's uh constantly changing and morphing um and has all these weird symptoms um it's important to get in front of the wave um, and not wait. And by that, I mean, our leaders should have been right in front of us and been up front. Hey, we have something going on. We don't know exactly what it is. We don't know, uh, and but this is what we're gonna do to try and, and help and, uh, and mitigate. Um, so well, there was no coordinated effort. I'm Everybody saying, was saying, doing their own thing, and right. then that created a lot of confusion. We didn't have any leadership. We didn't no have leadership any. whatsoever. No, nobody gave a, a, a flying fig. But what's the thing that it taught me is to be patient because this was the perfect pause. This covered the entire world, mm-hmm. everybody, and it's still impacting. You know, India is right now going through something that is just mm-hmm. unbelievable. Um, yeah, they have another strain that's going on right there. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And, you know, what do you think about the vaccines? Now, you know, of course, I am pro-vaccine because I took it. Uh, but again, mm-hmm. it's a crapshoot because we don't know if this is going to be like the flu invo- influenza where we're going to have to keep taking it every year uh, or if this is just, you know, two doses and you're fine. We don't know how it's going to really long-term affect our children or long-term affect us. What are some of the things that we should kind of try to hedge against moving forward, just in your, you know, independent opinion? Well, I mean, that, that's actually a really good question. I, I believe in vaccines. I'm a public health official. Um, I don't believe that our country is trying to poison our people. Um, uh, I don't believe that it should even be a political issue whatsoever. Um, Vaccines are important uh, for protecting. Now, I understand things in in medicine are changing all the time. And so I hear a lot of times people will say, hey, this vaccine took 10 years. This one we got done in a year. How can we trust it? Well, medicine is evolving and we're being able to do things that we weren't able to do before. Um, Now, the problem with COVID is Usually when we do a study, you want to monitor what happens over a longer period of time. And then you can say, hey, look, we watched for five years and we know these are going to be the side effects and, you know, these are the people. So we didn't have that luxury. I mean, we had a worldwide pandemic. We needed to move really fast. I think actually this virus is amazing. Um, Being an RNA virus, we may not need to have another shot. In fact, there are studies right now that show that those that who have gotten the vaccine, um, our rates are going down. But if you, and, and so when you look at all of infections, you they see this downward trend, right? If you tease it out and you look at those who've had the vaccine versus those who have not had the vaccine, those who have had the vaccine, their rates are going down, which is great. That's what we want. But if you look at those that have not had the vaccine, their infection rates are the same as they were at the height of the pandemic. For them, it has not changed. Mm -hmm. So the vaccine, I I think, is very important for us to have. California. But what I've noticed, too, there's not a lot of testing. Maybe people are getting, they're not testing at the magnitude that they once before. So that's definitely going to impact the numbers. Um, you know, and yeah, they'll impact with the base basis with with symptoms. So it's a little murky now because now we're dealing with two different populations. We have those that are vaccinated. We're only at 50% that have been vaccinated. Um, 
you look at their rates and then we look at the and the, the rates of those that have not had the vaccine, nothing has changed for them. But if you look at the whole population and say, well, but the rates are going down. Well, yeah, overall, because there's a little bit of herd immunity, but until we reach 70, 80% of people vaccinated, we really won't have any herd immunity. So we will continue to have outbreaks amongst those that are unvaccinated. Define that. I know what it means, but define herd immunity for my brains. So, you know, with herd immunity, um, you have a number of people who can't, can't get sick, basically, because they've already been exposed, like they have the, the vaccine inside them. Um, so when they get exposed, their body reacts, it sets out um, their antibodies and whatever virus or bacteria or whatever gets you know, eliminated and they don't get sick. Um, it, it would, the more people like you have that are like that, that you have all around you, then someone who has not taken a vaccine, they benefit by the fact that all the other ones around them are, 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 are don't, are don't have uh, that, um, aren't getting sick. So they're not passing it on to them. Okay. All right. Well, that's good. Uh, because there's still a lot of folks that are refusing to take the vaccine, uh, for whatever reason. Some of them are valid, you know, I, I can't. There tell. are a lot of unknowns. We pushed this vaccine quickly, uh, but we had to. We, we need to recover somewhat. We need to be moving in, you know. It can, typically in the past, it's taken 10 years to get a vaccine that we all got, got, we could get behind. We don't have 10 years. Right. You know, we, we have a, a global economy that's suffering and we need to move quickly. And what people fail to realize, too, is, you know, I talked to some of my friends. I got some big brain scientist friends here that work for UCSD and UCLA and Salk Institute. This was in the works. They knew that COVID existed a long time ago. They just really did not put the emphasis and the money behind it to, you know, produce it at warp speed because it hadn't gotten out to the public. So well, we actually, that's, that's, that's true, um, except, you know, there, there was a, there, there was another virus, oh, I'm blanking on the name now, that we were actually monitoring, a uh, SARS. Uh, SARS. So yeah. SARS has the same base as the COVID. And we've been monitoring SARS for years. Mm -hmm. In fact, that was one of those infectious diseases in the military that we were monitoring. So that's another thing that's not really well known is that we've already done some preliminary work with regards to the COVID virus because it's like the SARS virus that also came from China. So there were some actually some preliminary work that was done yeah, with regards to that. We were kind of working on this, uh, you know, so we, it just didn't pop up like overnight, okay, abracadabra brains. They had some research, they had data, uh, they had statistics, they have had people that had it, but really not at the the rate and the transmission rate that has experienced. So let's move forward. Okay, so now here we are. We are in 2021 and people are just now thawing out. You know, mentally, they are still in a funk. Mm -hmm. you know, they are fearful. They're sending their kids back to school. They don't know if they are going to, what the workforce is going to look like, you know, because it's different now. And you have decided to take it in a different direction and really now focus more so on health and wellness. Tell me what you are taking from your previous experience and all your research and all your knowledge. And what are you pouring into people today? <laughs> A loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> you were in the military. You know how to shoot it, baby. <laughs> uh, well, you know, so, you know, I, after my divorce, I tried a number of different jobs. Um, it, it, um, I, um, and I learned a lot from all of them. The biggest thing that I've learned is that we all need to take our time in whatever we decide to do. Don't jump, which is what I did. You know, I lost my money um, after my divorce. I was actually living on a fourth of what I had before. Mm. A little frightening. Um, I did have two doctorates uh, in the court said I could go back and I could go and do work. I'm like, 
but you can't because medicine's changing all the time. And uh, I can't do research when I haven't done research in you know over 10 years um, after staying home. So I jumped into a home health care business. I thought, well, it's medical. I can do this. Um, but I got overwhelmed because I still had a special needs daughter. And I was trying to run a whole health agency all by myself, which meant all of a sudden I had four hats. You know, I'm a marketer this day. I'm a recruiter this day. I'm an admin this day. It's way too complicated. Um, and um, I ended up deciding that this was not for me, um, that, yeah, I'm medical. I can't do this. Overwhelms, not working. So I tried to do e-commerce while I was moving. So that didn't work. Right. Well, um, <laughs> trial, and, trial and error. But, you know, I, I commend you for at least trying because some people tried. have been crushed. You know, I was crushed. <laughs> And then I, I moved into um, real estate, and that's actually how I became a real estate investor. But for me, it's not a passion. So in order for me to be a good real estate investor, I have to take a lot of classes. And, and I got to the point where I was in either in a class or in a meeting or in a study group. And I'm like, I went from one overwhelm which was with my home healthcare business to all of a sudden a totally different overwhelm. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, I found myself, it was like, well, I'm supposed to be in three places at the same time. <laughs> which one am I gonna do? <laughs> so um, that's not, doesn't work. When, when, you're, when you're in a transition, you really need to focus on what your strengths are, which is what I didn't do. And I recommend anyone else to do. Do something that you already know how to do because when you're trying to pick up a new skill at the same time um, as making money, it does not work. It doesn't work. You've got to focus on what you're already good at and magnify that. Um, and so when I got introduced to MLM, my, the company that I'm with right now, I was like, with my previous experience, you can already imagine what I was thinking. I'm like, I right. don't know about this, right, right, <laughs> but I'll try right. some product. <laughs> I felt amazing. Um, I have horrible allergies um, and uh, a lot of inflammatory issues. And within a couple of weeks on the product, uh, I realized I'm breathing from my nose. I forgot what that felt like after right, a right, decade. Right, right. <laughs> I slept all night and got woken up by the alarm clock. I'm like, what's that noise that just woke me up? Mm -hmm. I mean, so, and then I got my researcher hat on because you, know, you can't take your research out of your brain. Um, and I spent the next couple of months actually researching Ganoderma. It's like, what is this amazing thing? Uh, I looked on PubMed and I mean, all these other research sites and I found over 2000 peer reviewed articles. I, I found something that I could actually get behind and become passionate, which is why I ended up joining this group. Well, you know, it's important that uh, everyone take a look, an objective look at other options for medical, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and brains, if you are on something right now, keep doing what you're doing. Okay, because we are not, quote unquote, your medical doctor. We don't know what your medical history is. But what we do want you to know is that there are alternatives. There are options out there that you can look at, uh, you know, and that you can consult, that you can get, you know, research. Again, sometimes the Internet can be a double edged sword because mm -hmm. you try to end up di uh, diagnosing yourself. You mess around and be able to do your own uh, pacemaker. <laughs> <laughs> True. Because you overthink these things. But, you know, again, as an uh, analytical person and a researcher, you deal with the science, you deal with the facts. Mm -hmm. So it's really important. So I know, and you're, you know, you're pretty straight and narrow, I would assume. Uh, there's not a lot of fluff. There's not a lot of margin for error because you deal specifically with the facts, with the numbers, things that don't lie. So I know that you did your research on this, and I know that this is probably a great opportunity that you can share with some of my brains 
uh, you know, in a, a in a, a sidebar conversation about the product. But what I also want to um, talk to you a little bit about is being a single parent with a special needs child. <laughs> very difficult, very challenging. It and, and it's <laughs> very how challenging. How old is your daughter? She is 17. She just had her birthday about a week ago. Now, can I ask you this? You can answer this whether you want to or not. The impact of your daughter's being uh, having special needs and you being in the military, do you think that that had an impact on your relationship? Because, you know, I'm telling you, and yes, I'm saying in brains, you know, sometimes men will run for the hills. They just don't, they are not born to be empaths, not all of them, but for the majority, they're hunters and gatherers. They're not uh, the empath that women are. And it can really take a strain. Well, absolutely. Um, my, my ex, he was already very controlling. He was narcissistic. Um, he was very self-focused. Um, when we were first married, he tried to convince me the first five years after five years, he says, we can have a kid. And I'm like, okay, it's five years. It's time to have it, jump on it and let's get busy. Um, and he's like, <laughs> he's like, no, um, don't you enjoy being single? <laughs> like, so when I had both my girls, he was already angry at me because I held him to a promise he had made to me before we had gotten married. And then when He's a narcissist. Narcissists don't do well with anyone who has any kind of flaw. Uh, and, uh, and I think that that really did strain uh, because I started spending all of my time going from appointment to appointment, um, arguing with doctors and doing therapies, you know, at home as well. Um, and, uh, and I think that that distracted because that was too lifelike. That, um, narcissists don't like that. They, they want to be the center of attention. They want to be the driving force. Um, and anyone who is imperfect, they just can't handle it. So, yes, she, she was an issue. Well, you know, that's two big $25 words that keep coming up. Empath and narcissist. Empath and narcissist. Either you're one or the other. Where is the medium? After being in a relationship with someone that has narcissistic tendencies, because I can't judge a brother. I don't know him, you know. Um, but you know, after doing that, how do you reset yourself? How do you find? You got to take time. Um, you got to, um, so narcissists are very controlling. They control everything, what you eat, what you say, who your friends are. Um, they are very good at isolating you from everybody that you had as your, your core people. Um, because they want to control you um, and they brainwash you and they put you down over and over and over and over again. Um, so after a relationship like that, it's really important to take time for yourself so that you can relearn what your dreams are and what made you you. Um, it's, it's really, really very important, especially after dealing with a, someone who is um, being in a toxic relationship, you just you just have to take time, read, uh, be with friends, join support groups with other people who are going through the same sort of thing. Just don't stay alone uh, because you'll become even more isolated. You've got to get out and start uh, meeting. Not I'm not saying dating. I'm saying going out, having fun, and enjoying yourself. Take walks. Um, there's, nothing no. wrong, there's nothing wrong, honey, with a little maintenance call every now and then. <laughs> don't, uh, you know, don't, don't deprive yourself, okay? The world is a big old oyster. You can pick a, a big giant bite, oyster, yes. Big old oyster, right? so, you know, but again, finding. But it is important to know who you are first before yeah, you really exactly. become, you know, serious you with anybody on, else. You would draw, you know, a lot of times women draw that same type of energy, that same type of personality. Mm -hmm because they haven't established boundaries. They haven't figured out, you know, really again, who they are reinventing themselves. Cause you poured so much into the care of your daughter. You poured well, so yeah. And, and so you've got to think back, how did you get into that relationship? So there's even more than just um, overcoming the obstacles of being in that particular relationship. It's like, 
how did I get there in the first place? What was it about my past that resulted in my finding this person? Mm -hmm. And until you address those and come to terms with them, then there's no way to move forward. And the last thing you want to do after a toxic relationship is to find yourself in another toxic relationship. Right. Well, again, you have to, again, you have to journal, you have to figure out, you know, where you are. Now you have two daughters. One has special needs and the other one does not. That's correct. Let me ask you another question because I had another guest on. Um, did you find that your daughter that does not have the special needs, um, sometimes feel like she was missing out because you had to give your other daughter more attention? Was that a challenge? Well, yes, and for multiple reasons. One, you know, they're four years apart. Um, so she had a long time being a single child um, and she got to enjoy a whole bunch of, you know, uh, mommy time um, and doing things. And all of a sudden now we had this little one in a little interloper who needed help just walking um and having all of these appointments so yes she um she took that very uh, hard so now as a mother how do you how do you how do you find balance you know because you're a three-legged stool (laughs) that's true and the last thing you want to do is to break (laughs) yeah that's you don't want to break how do you bend and not break for how do you bend and not break well for a woman you know i want you to give some some uh, advice because you're a researcher. You've you've checked it out. You've done the work, you know, and you look and fabulous right now. So Thank you know, you. <laughs> how do you go from A to Z? Because it's not easy. It, it's not. You do it one day at a time. You you do it by um, recognizing that you know your older child is going to have some resentment, and you address that. You know, we would have mommy daughter day that it was just her and me just um and we would hire a babysitter and um uh, alexa would get to spend the day doing something totally different all day long and and we would go do something and we i did that so that she knew that she was still important in that um uh, and not to it's a it's one little thing that i could do other than that it's just you know talking and trying to keep the lines open it is. And, you know, on the flip side of that, sometimes the older child is so protective of the younger child because they know what they need and they want to protect them and they don't want them to, you know, feel any other way outside of, quote unquote, the norm. So I know that that in conjunction with being in the isolation of COVID and you trying to reinvent yourself was really a lot for you. And I, you know, I commend you. You are a soldier. You are a true soldier because you've made it out on the other side. So now let's talk a little bit about real estate investing. Okay. (laughs) You know, people go to this 1-800 ballroom and they think that they can just buy up everything and be a multimillionaire overnight. They have no idea, girlfriend, of what they are in for. You know, you're going to buy a piece of property. Have you ever been duped? Have you ever had a, a, a bad deal? Uh, I have actually, and that's part of the reason why I am focusing less on real estate because uh, it's traumatic for me. Uh, Mm -hmm. It was traumatic. Um, Not only was I having to learn all these new skills, um, but it was overwhelming. All the different tasks that I had to do. I'm like, I'm going right back to my home health care where I'm trying to have all these massive hats. Those, those groups that you talk about, you know, they have one mission, which is to get people to sign up. Mm-hmm. And one thing that they know, um, and this is where it's very important to keep in mind, that once you bought something, like a real estate program, which is me, <laughs> I bought one, right? You are the perfect target for another real estate program. And then another one, and it, because you're you you bought it once you're gonna buy it again and so one of the things that I found for myself is you buy one thing all of a sudden you have all these other gurus hey look at me look at me look at me and um uh so that's what I say it's 1-800 ballroom 
because that, and that's exactly what it is. They got and, um, commercial on at night, and you know, <laughs> you stressed out, you got insomnia, you can't sleep, and you go, "Wow, you know, I need some money. I need to reinvent my life. I need to do it quickly." Okay, let me dial this number. Let me whip out my credit card and do this. But Brains, what you have to understand is that there's different laws, there's different taxes. You know, you buy these properties on the auction block as is. You get in there, you got mold, you got a bad roof, your floor done fell out, all this kind of stuff. And it's in another state. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it can be tricky. <laughs> so you really kind of need to have an expert walk you through it. Get a mentor. You know? I did. I Actually, I've had a couple of mentors, um, but still it's that overwhelm factor it's that too many things to do and too short of a period of time with too many other responsibilities for, that did it for me um i think real estate investing is is a good tool um but people need to slow down so when someone says hey open your checkbook and write me a check for 10 grand right. um and you better do it by the end of the period or you're going to lose this and that and that and you're all gonna, these bonuses and stuff. That That's when you stand up and you say, you know what, even if I lose these bonuses, I'm going home. I'm going to think about it and um, and take your time, because if it's something that you really want to do, those bonuses aren't really shouldn't be the clincher that gets you into it to, to getting into a program. It, it should be something that you thought about. Um, and you know what your strengths and your weaknesses are, and you've got the time to do it, then you can dive into it. But don't um, don't just jump in. So the the problem is they know you buy by emotion, and then you justify afterwards with your brain. And so if they can get you emotionally riled up, they can get that sale, and they don't care about anything else. So I think that when we get riled up and someone wants something right now, no matter what it is, that's the time that we need to say, hold on. I don't care if I lose the bonuses. I'm going to take my time, decide that this is the right thing. I'm going to do my research. I'm going to check a few things out and then, and then go in, but don't go in just because they said right. you don't have until the end of the day. <laughs> but you know what? Sometimes you, you do have to act you know, quickly. So you have to be able to have your ducks in a row. And I'm a firm believer that if it is for you and it is meant for you, you can't miss it. You cannot yeah. miss it. It may be a week from now. It may be 30 seconds from now. When you have to act on it and you're called to do it, you're called to do it. So let's mm -hmm. play some, uh, let's play a few games with you. Let's ask you some really fun questions. <laughs> okay. <Should I> wait. <laughs> what are three things that you cannot live without, Katarina? Three things I cannot live without. I cannot live without fun. Okay. <laughs> I'm always looking for something fun. Um, I love traveling, which I haven't had a chance to do, but man, I, but I miss traveling. Um, I love puzzles. Oh, really? I really, in fact, I have uh, completed a 4,000 piece puzzle that's hanging on my wall. <laughs> that's how much I love puzzles. <laughs> wow. My mother loved puzzles too, but she got to the point where at 91, she had to put it together for the, you know, for, I think it was ages four through 10. And sometimes those were a challenge too, when they all they had all the same colors, but puzzles, because again, you like that. You like putting the story together. You like the facts. Mm -hmm. so I, I can definitely see that. When you say fun, what is fun to you? What What's fun outside of the puzzle? Uh, I like taking walks. Um, I like reading books, uh, playing the piano, uh, needlepoint, um, anything that's just for me. Okay, good. <laughs> it's good. fun. <laughs> well, and then, you know, I, I love family stuff too, going on hikes, especially like in the mountains. I like that. All right. So what would you tell a younger self? Don't jump, just take your time, you know, figure out what you want, stick to your guns. Don't let anyone tell you that you are who you are not. <laughs> right. Otherwise you'll end up just like me trying to rediscover someone she was when she was 10. <laughs> exactly, exactly. What, uh, what's on your bucket list? I would uh, love to go on a cruise. 
That's one of the things on my bucket list. Um, you haven't been like on a cruise? To, um, I have. Um, as a kid, we took a uh, cruise from Italy to Greece, um, and that that was a lot of fun. I, I still remember that. Um, and and that and uh, and as um, a military brat in a military school, uh, when we graduated from elementary school, we spent two weeks on the Rhine Motel River taking a boat ride up and down. That was fun. I love water, um, and I can just I think doing a cruise would just be phenomenal. Girl, I, I love it. We were supposed to be on that cruise, that brand new cruise ship, 5,000 people on March the 9th of 2020 at the height of the outbreak of COVID. Girl, now let me tell you, you think that it's nice, but to be in that little small contained room and nope. when they say, yeah, you're not isolated to the full on ship. You are contained to that room and they put, you can't go to the buffet. <laughs> There's no buffet. That is a tray left outside of your door. So that would have been a challenge. So I just really thank God that, you know, that they gave me all my money back. In addition to that, I said, I will see Italy, but it will be at a different time. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Not, not in the middle of a worldwide pandemic. <laughs> what makes you cry? What makes me cry? Well, happy tears. I love laughing in, um, with comedies. I mean, I'll just laugh my heart out um, and that'll make me cry because <laughs> it's just that's so funny. Good. That's good. Uh, yeah. Um, other things, I mean, just dealing with life to life can make me cry, but not in a happy way. <laughs> well, I want happy tears. That's what I wanted. Happy I like happy tears. <laughs> and last question. If you were a flower, what flower would you be? I would be a lily. A lily. That's sweet. A tiger. <laughs> tiger lily? Okay. I love it. I love it. Well, you are all that and then some. You are a fun, adventurous woman that is smart, that is heady, that knows how to edit and pivot, that knows how to be analytical, and you've learned to take your time. And I value that, and I respect so much of that in you and the things that you do. Uh, being a single parent, it's not for chumps. Okay. Nope. <laughs> Definitely and, uh, not. And the girls, I commend them for hanging in there with you. Because it's not just about you hanging in there with them. They got to tolerate your ups and downs and ins and outs as well. Yeah. So uh, please tell my brains how to get in contact with you. I want them to talk to you about, you know, what you're doing. If you have any current offerings or promotions uh, that you want to, you know, sidebar with them. Because, you know, you're a wealth of information. You're a super brain. <laughs> you. Uh, the best way is actually to reach me through Facebook. My name, uh, K-A-T-E-R-I-N-A N-E-U-H-A-U-S-E-R Katerina Newhauser. I'm on Facebook. Um, if you just message me and I know that you're from the broadcast, I'll be more inclined to accept the invitation. You know, I've, I've had some spoofy emails, so that's if you direct message me through Facebook. That's the best way to reach me. And be clear with your intentions, brains, you know? Yes. Yeah. Now, I don't know. But like I said, it might be a hot day too. So don't just be so <laughs> quick. Don't be so quick to not friend. You know, you never know. You can edit and filter. You know how to check it out. You know how to do the research. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So I think you're on the edge with me, brains. I need you to go and subscribe. I need you to share, like, and love all of the episodes that you hear and see here on the edge with April Mahoney and Katerina Newhauser. Okay. All right. All right, baby. Have a really great day. Brains, be good to yourself. You ain't got no choice. Nobody else is going to do it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you.